views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Is it time for your checkup? Your credit checkup, that is. How's your credit health? Or do you even understand what impact your credit score can have on your life? Are you thinking about buying a new home or are you a business owner considering starting a business? Well, understanding your credit and how to keep it is health, or I should say keep it healthy, is very essential. And you don't want to miss this episode of Perspectives because our credit and investment experts join me next in studio. You're watching Perspectives with yours truly, Darren Hyman. What's on your mind? Anything relevant to life, you bring it to the table. Whether you make a move solo or a movement with a stable. No fables, you speak on your decisions. Cause in the long run, it's your voice, your views, your vision. Keeping it real with many messages for you to know. This ain't radio, but DJ runs the show. Entertainment, he rocks it. Politics, he locks it. The host with the most would handle any topic. Don't forget to share your perspective with shines a light. Cause it might make a difference in someone else's life. What's your perspective? And hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Perspectives. I am Darren Hyman. We thank you for watching. As always, you can watch Perspectives every week here on Bronx S Channel 67. Find out what is going on. We invite you to share your perspective. And how can you do that? Of course, you can watch. You can get us on uh, email. You can also get us on social media. Perspectives on Facebook and then also on Twitter or hit me on my professional page Darren C. Jaime and uh, you can hear get some information and we'll share maybe you've got a show idea let me know and uh, you never know it might make it to air but coming up on this edition of Perspectives we're talking about credit talking about investing talking about homes our first guest is the founder and CEO of Y2K Credit Solutions and Debit Solutions now he's a consumer credit specialist and credit counselor over 10 years, he single-handedly changed the lives of thousands of people, including many A-list celebrities, giving them their financial power right back. His fundamental approach is to educate clients and offer short and long-term solutions. We welcome now Andy Suku, who's here with us in studio. And then also joining us is Oliver Toussaint, an experienced real estate investor and an asset consultant in New York City. Oliver has extensive knowledge of foreclosure, bankruptcy, and short sales, and has helped many families get out of debt, save their homes, as well as secure their financial future. And with his guidance, his clients are given the tools and confidence to regain their credit worthiness. And uh, gentlemen, it's good to have you both here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you yes. for having us. Solving Appreciate the problems it. of the world. <laughs> all day, man. All, all day, day, every day. Fixing huh? them all the time. Yes. Well, listen, when it, when it comes to actually home ownership and when it comes to investing, obviously, it's probably one of the biggest things a family or individual right. can really get themselves involved in. And right. uh, I know you do a lot of heavy lifting to help families uh, with that. But let me start off with this, first of all, the time, the season. We're here in the summertime right now. What kind of season is it in terms of home buying and, 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 and purchasing? Is it a good season, bad season? It's a good season right now, I would say, to, to purchase <clears> a home. Um, but the first step in, in starting that process really, is, again, is getting your credit on point and making sure that your credit score uh, puts you in a situation where you're getting the best rates possible uh, once you decide to purchase a home. And uh, I'm sure Andy can speak more to that. Mm -hmm. That's that's correct. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no good, no good. Right. So uh, the credit is the key force in driving in, in this whole financial industry. Um, realtors re require pre-approval. So you need a credit, up to par credit to get a pre-approval for the bank to issue the pre-approval. Um, even for investments, to get good rates, to get loans from the banks, you need good credit scores. Correct. So in general, without, without the credit, nothing is going to move. So if you're looking to buy now, whether it be this season, next season, summer, spring, fall, you need to have components and criteria in play already, uh, mm -hmm. which is the number one is a credit. So when we talk about credit scores, we <laughs> always hear about credit scores. What are good credit scores and what's a good score to have for, for home ownership? That's a good question. So FICO, uh, about two weeks ago, they just raised the bar in a credit score. Prior to two weeks ago, 720 was considered a good credit score. Now 765 is considered to be the good credit score for you to get a decent rate on your mortgage. 720 is considered a decent score for auto loan rates. Mm. Um, so if you're looking to get the best rate, you need to be about a 765 and higher. 765 765, and 765. that's a high number. Yeah. And there's a lot of uh, 
components that need to be put into play in order to keep that score high. And you know, if I don't know if we have enough time to speak about that today, but you can go onto our website, y2kcreditsolutions.com, and it's all the data is there what you need to do. But 765 is the key number now. So if I don't have a 765, I come to Oliver and I say, listen, you know what, Oliver? I want to get a home, but my numbers aren't what Andy says. We can make recommendations, but keep in mind with those recommendations, you can still probably qualify for a loan, but you won't get the best rate because your score is maybe, let's say, uh, for FHA, they may say you need a, a 620 or 640 to qualify for the loan, but you may not get the best uh, interest rate possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have to keep in mind those are the, the, the factors that are going to affect the, the loan and the type of uh, monthly payments you're going to be paying because you don't have the best possible scores. Mm -hmm. So you can still qualify, but you won't get the best rate possible. To, to add on to what Oliver's um, saying, you know, consumers need to look at it. If you're going to get the, the home now and you're at a 620, what's going to happen six months later? Are you going to be able to afford the payments, the interest rate? At that point, who knows where the finance economy is going to be at? Are you going to be able to refi it? Are you going to be in a better credit situation or a bad situation? Mm -hmm. So we try to advise our clients to, before you get into the, the whole process, <coughs> resolve all the credit issues. So you're not stuck six months later or in a position where you can't afford it or you're forced to lose your home, foreclose or whatever, you know? We hear a lot about check your credit, always check your credit. We know there's free things out there. Credit Karma is one of those. Correct. Uh, and so when I look at Credit Karma, I understand that those numbers may not actually be reflective of what my actual score is. Am I correct? That's correct. So no third party site is ever going to be 100% accurate. Um, the reason why, it's a soft pull. In order, the, your credit card company has it, Credit Karma, Total Credit Check. They're all on, they're all, it's a soft pull. In order to get a real time data, you have to incur an increase on your credit report. To get an increase, you get it from a bank or a dealership, you pull your credit for an auto loan. When you get that increase, when you're getting real-time data. The third-party monitoring sites are just guidance for you to use it to see if anyone is using your credit for identity theft. But don't take that information 100%. Mm -hmm. uh, my, maybe 75% of it is accurate. So my numbers could be actually higher? It could be higher or lower. Mm. It all depends. Also, Credit Karma is geared to TransUnion. There's three credit bureaus, not only one. So you need to see what's going on in all three bureaus. You know, you want to see, make sure all the data is the same across the board in all three credit bureaus. Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty important stuff there. Oliver, as we talk about buying homes right now, um, <coughs> there's a lot of property out there, particularly in New York City, the Bronx, and, uh, you know, we're, we're one of those places that sees a lot of homes and a lot of for sale signs that are out there. Give me a little bit about what somebody should know going into buying a home. Well, aside from the credit as, as the starting point, you, you may want to understand how, what type of down payment you can make and how that affects your, your monthly payments. So for example, um, let's say you're looking for an, an affordable home through an FAJ loan and they say, well, you only need three and a half down. And that's great. However, what you want to do is you want to ask your lender to do a comparison for you. So you want to look at three and a half down versus 5% down versus 10% down. And long term, how is that going to affect you? Right. So you don't want to just look at, you know, putting down less money and getting the home right away. You want to look at putting down money, getting the home and being able to maintain the home for the long term. So those are the factors I would say you want to really pay attention to. So any lender that you go to, make sure that they give you sort of a, a picture of the of a full understanding of everything in terms of down payment and the long term effects of the mortgage. And uh, once you commit to it, what are the common mistakes people make? <clears throat> Common mistakes people make, and, and the biggest one we see is they just want to get a home, in all honesty. That, that is, it's sort of like tunnel vision. They see nothing else. I just want that home, and that's the home I'm going to get. Mm -hmm. You have to kind of see the, the big picture and say, okay, I, I like the home, but can I maintain the home? So the biggest key to that, as I say, is you got to make sure that once you get the home, your finances are in a position where you can maintain it for, a little, for the long term, not just for, not just for yourself, but also for the next generation. To touch on that, uh, what uh, Oliver is stating also, anyone could buy a home. You know, it's 3% is what, $15,000 on a $300,000 house, whatever the numbers are. But long term, and it's where the issue comes in. You have to factor. fix it. You have things that break in your home. You want to make sure that you're able to fix all those issues and not use your liquid cash. So credit comes into play with that also. That's why having your credit up to speed is after you get the mortgage, you can get a credit card so you can secure yourself. If anything happens, you can always fix it but not without breaking the bank. Mm -hmm. um, but the main thing, anyone, I, I tell my clients this, anyone can get a Mercedes, anyone can get a Cadillac, whatever it is that you drive, but it, it's maintaining it six months later down the line, can you afford it? So you always want to make sure your budget is in play. Uh, you, you have a 
a really six month goal plan mm -hmm. of how you're gonna structure this deal and maintain it and, and move forward. Uh, we'll be back with more. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a quick break, come back with uh, Oliver and Andy. When we return after this, we'll continue our talking, talk about investing and uh, is now the right time. <laughs> Thomas, you've got pre-diabetes, but with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. But I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. I... <laughs> <laughs> so we're good? What? Oh, you still have pre-diabetes. Big time. Behold the angry giant. Behold the angry giant. Behold the angry giant. Behold the angry giant. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. There's one thing you can never have sex without. It's not something you buy. Or something you take. In fact, there's only one way to get it. It has to be given to you, freely. It's consent. Because sex without it isn't sex. It's rape. Consent. If you don't get it, you don't get it. It's on us to stop sexual assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. Entertainment, he rocks it. Politics, he locks it. The host with the most would handle any topic. Don't forget to share your perspective with Shines of Light. And we're back here on Perspectives. Darren Jaime here with you. Our guests in studio, Oliver Toussaint and Andy Suku, Y2K Credit Solutions. And uh, Oliver is an asset consultant and real estate expert. And uh, right before the break, we were getting ready to get into something. And uh, we were talking about common mistakes that people make. I want to give you a chance to jump in. Sure. So one of the mistakes I feel people make is they purchased a home with no equity in it. Mm -hmm. So what the banks look for when they refinance, let's say someone gets into financial trouble while they have the home, is they want to have at least 20% equity in the home in order to, re to refinance and help that home buyer. So I would suggest that home buyers also look for a property that they can afford but also has some type of equity in it where it gives, it gives them a buffer just in case they fall into financial troubles. Let's say loss of a job or divorce or something like that. So it's, it's critical to find a property, but also find something that has some equity in it so you have some flexibility. It's also critical to understand this, this whole scoring thing. And I want to oh, go back yeah. to that because that's what you really do. You help people in the area of improving their score, getting stuff off their credit, and, and really getting them on the right path so that way they can get to Oliver. Absolutely. And so uh, it's Andy first, then Oliver. That's <laughs> <laughs> right? It's but, a uh, process. It is, it is a, a process. process. It is a process. And I want to uh, take a few moments, and I think we have some graphics here. I could talk about this. I want to talk about the credit scores and the scoring models. And if you can, break some of this down for us because uh, we know there's different scores, we hear about different scores, but uh, maybe you could break this down for us. And so uh, let's first talk about the FICO score. All right, so there's, there's a dozen Vantage score and scoring models out there. Experian have their own, Equifax have their own, TransUnion have their own, but they're rated differently. FICO and Vantage is the most commonly used. Bank uses them, dealership, everyone uses FICO and Vantage. Mm -hmm. FICO is a fair Isaac company, corporation. Uh, they're the one that creates, takes all the data off all three credit bureaus and create that three-digit number for you. Um, I, as I mentioned earlier, FICO just raised the bar at 765. is considered good credit now. Mm -hmm. um, Vantage also is another scoring model. The bureau uses Vantage. So um, when we talk about Vantage score, that's the, the bureau uses that? Correct. The okay. Expert in Facts and TransUnion uses Vantage score. FICO uses all three also. Mm -hmm. um, but you really want to just focus on Vantage and FICO score, and that's what everyone is using. And so we see the graphic there. It's created by the three credit bureaus, and uh, they said the latest version is uh, ranges from 300 to 850. 850, that's correct. The highest credit score you can have now is 850. Mm -hmm. And actually, at Y2K Credit Solutions, we've put quite a few clients within the last quarter of 2017 
at an 850 credit score. Really? It was unbelievable. Unbelievable. They were like, I was at a 420, 850, yeah. We did that in four months. And it's, and it's achievable. Achievable. And it, but there's a lot of maintenance behind it to keep it that way. Mm -hmm. That's the trick behind it, maintaining it to keep it that way because, you know, debt utilization, 30%, 70% uh, free. 30% mm -hmm. utilization, 70% free. Once you go into 31% utilization on your credit card, your score drops. Mm -hmm. So to keep that score high and to keep that high vantage score and that FICO score, basic concept is low debt, high score. Low debt, high score. Mm -hmm. Let me go to uh, a plus score. What's that? A plus score is what Experian uses. Mm -hmm. um, but again, these are all individual scoring models. The bureaus use their own kind. Mm -hmm. So Experian is only going to use, or is it, Experian and Transient is only going to use the plus scores. But the Vantage is really, really what, where you want to be, Advantage and FICO. Mm -hmm. or, but in the end, see the thing is, the way the plus score works, the credit bureau takes their own kind of data off, the, off your report and calculates your score. Vantage and FICO takes everything off of all three bureaus, your mm -hmm. utilization, your debt, how long you carry the debt for, how long you had the, the cards open for. So mm -hmm. calculates everything in one. Oliver, if I'm coming your way after I've cleared Andy and I'm on my way now, what are, what are the things that I need to have so that way I can be ready to begin the process other than the money, of course? Right, so obviously you'll need a few things. You'll need uh, two years tax returns, uh, W-2 forms, uh, uh, the latest bank statements, past two uh, months bank statements. Uh, those are the, the essential things. Obviously, a picture of your ID to validate your citizenship. Right. <laughs> Just, okay. And um, so those will be the critical items. Uh, your tax returns, your W-2 forms, uh, bank statements. Uh, those are the essential items that's needed to get the process started so you can get pre-approved to purchase your home. Here's one last thing. One extra tip you should add on. Um, the down payment that you're going to put should be seasoned in your account for three months. Your bank 90 account. days, correct. Three correct. Months. If you put it in... 30 days before you go to closing or you look to start looking to purchase the home, it's red flag. So you want to make sure you have your down payment seasoned for 90 days in your bank account. No big transactions uh, in or out of your account. Mm -hmm. Payroll deposits, I guess that's okay, right? Correct, correct. But no big purchases because um, you have to supply paperwork for that. Really? That's another key component, so having the money seasoned. So you got to have the money there at least 90, correct. 90 days. seasoned in your account. Correct. So I guess the obvious thing is have my down payment and then wait three months and then go try to go find a house? No, I mean... Not necessarily, well, um, because you can have the down payment and, and the process itself may take three months. Correct. So as the process is going along, that money is already seasoned. So you don't necessarily have to wait three months before you start the process, mm. okay? And, and so what Andy mentioned in terms of seasoning, as long as you can source the money, meaning you can have a large transaction, but as long as you can source it properly, the banks will accept that. So um, you could have a big transaction, but be able to prove where the money came from, that's acceptable to the banks also. Mm. Correct. And so when we talk about process, you, you, you mentioned it could take up to three months. If I have all my paperwork, how long should a person be prepared to wait in this process? Well, we're talking about paperwork. When I say three months, I'm talking about uh, uh, paperwork going to the bank um, and then the process of searching for the home. So as we're searching for the home, um, it, that process may take three months. So in, the, in that time, your money is already seasoned. So when you find a home that the bank is ready to uh, pre-approve you uh, to approve you for by giving you a loan commitment, we should be good and ready to go. So uh, that's what I meant when I say three months. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily the paperwork, but the process of getting the paperwork and searching for the home. So if I go with you, I find a home. I like my home. I got my paperwork in order. I got my money in order. How long before I can possibly get into the house? Uh, it all depends on the attorneys and uh, the banks and the close and the closing process. So uh, it may take anywhere from maybe 30 to 45 days. Mm -hmm. Once contract is signed and you get the loan commitment, uh, it may take anywhere from 30 to 45 days. Mm -hmm. right. Then you have inspection also, add that in. So there's a few components that ties into that three months. Right. All right, let me take a quick break. Come back with Andy and Oliver. We'll be right back right after this. Coming to you from our BronxNet studios, four new shows highlighting some of the best of the Bronx has to offer. We sit down with political leaders on In the District and discuss local legislation, events, and issues. See how the community and business come together with The Bronx Now on BronxNet.
Nosotros features leaders from a Latino community. Meet those who are moving to make a difference in public service, business, arts, and culture. Looking for new and exciting dining experiences? Then you'll want to savor the Bronx and try new restaurants and eateries that fill the borough with delicious dishes. We have it all, so experience the Bronx in new and fresh ways on Bronx Night. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide and go seek. Back here on Perspectives, our guest in the studio, Andy Sugu, CEO and founder of Y2K Credit Solutions, Oliver Toussaint, who's also a realtor in the Bronx and Brooklyn, and uh, he's got all the answers for us today. And you guys, we want to thank you uh, for sharing. But Andy, I, a special time for you because uh, 11 years. Yeah, yesterday was the 11-year anniversary for Y2K Credit Solutions and Y2K Debt Solutions, actually. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the company started in 2006. It was a prototype project uh, working out of my mom's basement. Um, had some hurdles, uh, ups, downs, but pulled through them and um, ended up 11 years later. Here we are, uh, eight locations. We have Canada also. Um, so we're going strong, going strong. Going from your mother's basement to where you are today, what was the key to get you from the bottom where you are um it close closing out the noise the negative noise you know everyone's saying it's not gonna work it doesn't work you know you're not gonna be able to keep up um I, like i said i took a lot of hits up and down you know uh it wasn't easy it wasn't an easy road i, I would i'm never gonna say it was an easy road but um just stay focused and, and my goal and my vision for mm -hmm. where i wanted to go you know even up to this day i still learn new things about the credit industry uh, things are changing daily um so i'm always have to refresh my my database of about the industry, but um, just staying focused and um, hungry for that, mm -hmm. that, that passion for that success. And I created a company, and here we are, mm -hmm. 11 years later. And it's a very special event coming up, Oliver. I'll let you share a little bit. Yes, absolutely. Uh, July 11th, uh, from 11 to uh, 1 p.m. I'm sorry, July 22nd. We don't people showing up July 22nd. <laughs> yes. There won't be anyone July there. July <laughs> 22nd. <laughs> From 11, uh, uh, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m., uh, 25 4th Avenue uh, in Brooklyn, New York, at the Pacific uh, Library Branch. Uh, we'll be hosting um, a seminar for individuals with regards to credit repair, uh, mortgages, understanding how credit affects your ability to purchase and get a home, how to utilize credit to maybe fund and grow your business. Uh, we'll have various speakers, including Andy, um, various individuals from uh, different real, real estate companies, different brokers, and uh, mortgage brokers. Mm. I don't like to say credit repair because we do more than that now. Like credit restoration, financial literacy. But we urge a lot of people and everyone, if you can come out, it's a free event. It's just education, things you didn't know. I mean, you clear up a lot of misconception about the industry and credit scoring, where your scores, why they are the way they are, you credit card utilization. It's free information. It's a great day just to learn things, ask questions. So we urge everyone from the five boroughs, just come in, just sit down, listen to it, you know, mm -hmm. ask any question, bring, your, bring your, your hardship, we'll talk about that also, whatever you're going through right now, and we'll put it together a plan on how to fix it for you. Uh, you know, being in the industry 11 years, you realize there's a lot of financial literacy out there. Uh, people don't have the right financial literacy, they don't understand how it works, mm -hmm. they just go by what people are telling them. That might not necessarily be true or work for you. So we're here to clear all the misconceptions up and lay it out on the table, this is what it is, and this is what you need to do. Um, FICO just raised the score, 765. That's a hard score to attain. Mm -hmm. A lot of people can't carry that. About 85% of the consumers can't carry that score. They can't. It, 85. It, 85%. It's high. Right. Look at the economy in New York. Right. You know, it's so much rezoning. People have to move out. They don't have credit. They have so much debt. What are you going to do? So is it conceivable to say that if I pay, I'm, or is this a misnomer? I pay all my bills off, pay all my credit cards off, da 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 My credit score is going way up? It doesn't, no, it doesn't work like that. There, there's, a, there's a process behind it. And it, it's both sides, you and the bank. The bank making some interest off of you, reporting positive data on your credit report. 
when you pay everything off, the bank is not making any interesting any interest off of you. It shows no date on your credit report. That shows I have no credit. Mm -hmm. So there's a process behind that, and there's a procedure how that should be how you should be paying your credit card bills back, and that's something we'll teach everyone about also at the event. Oh, yeah. So there's a lot of helpful information on the real estate, all the good programs that are out there, the credit, everything you need to know is going to be in one building, one time that day. It's, an, it's an open forum for any question, anything you may think you know or think you don't know. Exactly. We'll be able to answer those questions for you. Um, and just feel free to come out and uh, just learn and educate yourself and, uh, and absorb as much information as you can. Well, certainly we'll be looking forward to that. Let us know how it works out. Once Definitely. Again, Thank you so much, Darren. Andy, good Thank to you. have you. Thank you. Oliver, pleasure Appreciate having it. you. Andy and all of our guests here on Perspectives, and we invite you to stay connected to us now. If you want to find out more information, you saw the information at the bottom of the screen for Andy and Y2K Credit Solutions, as well as to get in touch with Oliver. That's about all the time we have for this particular show. Listen, until the next time we meet, stay safe, share your perspective with somebody else. It just might make a difference in someone else's life. Take care. Relevant to life, you bring it to the table. Whether you make your move solo or a movement with a stable. No fables, just speak on your decisions. Cause in the long run, it's your voice, your views, your vision. Keeping it real with many messages for you to know. This ain't radio, but DJ runs the show. Entertainment, he rocks it. Politics, he locks it. The host with the most would handle any topic. Don't forget to share your perspective, which shines a light. Cause it might make a difference in someone else's life. neighbors and best friends. I love my sister. My heart, my heart doesn't, doesn't see race. race. Love, love is love. Our family is no less than any other family. Open up your books to page 360. Did you just look at your phone while you was in class? You played yourself. Talking about inspirational quotes. You gotta believe in yourself. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it, so make it. Louise. Louise, can you give me an example of an inspirational quote? Don't play yourself. The key is to make it. And who said that? I did. Now that's a major key alert. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at GetSchool.com.